Uh, maybe we better try to sit some places lighter. Oh, nope, this is good enough. Anyway, this is popping up on the player episode number 15. For those of you who are wondering what happened to episode number 13, it was inadvertently deleted by me. I told you guys I wasn't feeling any pain yesterday, and obviously my memory left and Should went someplace. Okay. It went into the further. Anyway, tonight I got Agent X, Mike Clark. And Mike Clark and I, this is the only DJ that I've actually known personally for more than 20 years. Mike Clark used to be my hairdresser and maybe yeah, I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shampoo. This is one of the internationals. Mike, you've traveled to. I've been, uh, I haven't been to Africa yet, but I've been to Asia, South America, Europe. Those places, Canada. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And where, where did you, uh, where did you receive like the most love, the most hype? Where do you enjoy playing mostly? Well, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. It's, that's 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 kind of tough because they all show like uh, the same amount of love. Like for instance, uh, South America. I was in uh, uh, Santiago, Chile. Uh, the first time I went there, I saw. Like a whole, like uh, we was coming from the mountains, and I seen like enough people to think it's a big festival. Wow! So when I'm going down there thinking it's a festival, the same time I'm going to my party, these people are coming down to the party. You know, it was uh, like the first. Uh, I was like the first DJ, international DJ, to go over there, so it was like this real big deal. That was like a lot of love. And then uh, on the same flip, Japan. Uh, Japan toured there, had a residency there. I would fly there like every other month. Um, you know, I, I stayed there one week. I had a birthday. Uh, I did New Year's. I decided to stay a couple of days. Had my birthday. I just announced it like the next day before I knew it. The hotel where I had the lobby rooms at. Oh my God. Are you serious? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's things that you don't really expect, but, you know, depending on who's listening to your records, where you're coming from, you know. And speaking of records, you've penned a lot of music, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, I don't have a strong record I mean, of making tunes, but I got a long record because I was one of the originals. You know, I was there at the DJ contest that started off with the fucking drum machine. Okay. And so, you know, I just always, you know, my, my idea, I'm a DJ first, so my idea back then was I'll just make a tune just because that was like my entry or you know this me showboating at the party or this Mike's tune you know that kind of stuff but okay it wasn't so much a record business until you know later on when it just became part of the standard of traveling I you know my interest in, in producing started sticking in more and like Mike Banks and a couple other folks were showing me how to play keys and, and then I just you know I just kind of messed around you know okay. Okay. And I asked this of all of my DJs. Who are your top five Detroit DJs? Huh. So I just don't get out that much. but you know, It can be from any era, any time. Well, I mean, you know, like, first off, without a doubt, I'm going to say Ken Kai Because Ken Kai was one DJ who was just always. Um, for me, I, I like to study. And that's how I look. And then with him, uh, you know, he was my mentor. I used to get my records from him on a weekly. But when he played, it was just like I was a little kid taking notes, period. That's the thing about Ken. And then, you know, uh, you know my boys, uh, Al Esther, Earl McKinney, uh, Magic, you know, these guys, I play with them. I love every, there's never a time when they don't play. I'm looking up just saying, what the hell? You know, Ray Bone, Rick, too, you know, the cast, they, they get in their zone, you know, or, uh, um, Tony, Dennis, and Eric Johnson. You know, I, it's just, I can't really say who's my favorite you DJ. You can't say who your top say, five, but I these like, are the guys oh, yeah, you like they, vibing yeah, these, with. Yeah, you know. I mean, you name some You name some really heavy cats, you know, yeah, all of them. You, you, know. You, you know you name more than five, but that's, that's okay. It's just, yeah, it's say, just you know. so many that are here and that have so much talent. Yeah, well, and, I played with Delano. And that, when he throw disco on, I mean, oh my when God. I was over in Europe, I saw he had that disco party. You saw a custom out on the thread, like, finally. I've been and trying he's to having get a part two. Yeah, I'm going to go to it. Yeah, I've been I, trying I definitely to get him to disco there. like since day one because that's where I know him from. I, mean, okay. I knew him. You know, that was, you know, when I grew up, I grew up listening to him. And it was that post-disco era. So I knew he could play that because that's where I come from. Listen I think the funny thing about Delano is, is he goes so far back. 
but Delano still looks like he just got out of like yeah, no, he's third good. grade. He's yeah, he's got such Robinson a looking. youthful look about himself, <laughs> and and I enjoy. Yeah, it. but him and Mike Brown too, because Mike Brown he's he's quiet, but I've been uh, playing with Mike Brown lately. He he does a lot of shows with his cousin Stacy Pullins. But uh, and you do uh, you're a resident over at Northern Lights. You do the yeah, nightlife party. Yep. You and um, me, Tony Nova. Uh, I got uh, my boy Sean Hogan, A.K. Tingle Fingers, on drums with uh, Madam Butterfly. So it's like uh, you know, it's kind of like a you know, we get special guests. So the, the concept of it is, you know, I'm not rebelling against shit, but I'm just trying to have a party to actually mean something. Okay. You know, so you know, I got my drummers there. You know, I'm playing. Uh, yeah, because Craig Huckabee man. comes down and he uh, he yeah. tears it up on. The, it's the congas, right? Yeah, but then you know, I pass instruments out for everybody to play. So right. you know, everybody got shakers and stuff like that. So you know, it's it's an interaction type thing. Yeah, and your your parties are very interactive, and you you invite right. people to not just dance to the music, but be, become, become a part, part of part of the music, yeah. and that's what to me sets you apart from. Thank you realistically everybody else because nobody else has instruments at their party so I can definitely say that that differentiates you from soul from everybody really I mean real talk and again it's it's no affront to anybody else but well you know it's, you it's definitely it's definitely nothing against anyone it's just for me you know I've, I've been in the game since I was like barely a teenager I started when I was like 11 12 years old and like me and Al, me, me and Al Astor was in junior high school he started a year before me. I didn't think I was going to DJ, but then all of a sudden I got hit with the bug myself. But we started coming out of ninth grade. Wow. You know. And, and for the Detroit house community, oh, there's my besto. That <laughs> work lights. <laughs> yeah. So Esto from Esto's Garage just walked in. If you've never had anything from Esto, I'm going to get him on camera in a minute with his ultra cute self <laughs> if you've ever had anything from Esto's Garage trust me you've you've enjoyed it I know because I eat a lot of Esto's food anywho um, if you had to say anything to the Detroit house community what would you like to say to them let's just stay moving forward and uh, we were part of the original of the underground and let's maintain that by keeping that going it's not about Egos are trying to say you better than one because evolution always proved none of us mean shit after seven to ten years. But let's keep our music progressive because this is Detroit. That's what I got to say. Oh, well, then shit, say it. I <laughs> think you did. just did. I, th <laughs> I think you just did. That's probably some of the best I've heard since I've been doing this. And and, and, and you and I, again, we, we do go back a long way. And I know you did do a remix for Madonna. Mm -hmm. Well, Nana, actually, this is what happened. I did a remix of, uh, it was an old 60s tune, and uh, the people who I was doing it for, they wanted to push the video of their artists over putting the music out on a record, you know, okay. to a radio station. So as a result of them playing on a radio station but not giving the records out and doing the videos instead, mysteriously, Madonna came out two months later with the exact same track and it sounded very similar to my production. And I'm not saying that she took it from me by far, but I'm just saying it was obvious by a lot of people. That, I mean, and what track was that? You know I Fever. got to be nosy. Okay. Fever. Yeah. Okay, okay. You know? And I'm not saying no one stole anything, but I am saying it was just ironic. It sounds of, awful similar. Well, you know the timing of it all. It just was like, you know, we well, that's not first, anything no, so. new in the in the music business. So. Yeah, you know, at the time, you know, house music was new, so it was it was it was small, growing. It didn't, you know, it was, you know, it was it was it was at the core of again. It was it was like the early '90s. So what is you you were with Delano, Norm, and. And uh, you, you well, took the beat down. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was uh, me, Norm, and Delano. You know, it was, you know, basically, uh, Norm and Delano uh, were two of the brothers I grew up with, musically speaking. Like, uh, Delano, you know, when I first got into the industry, you know, he was doing stuff with the direct drive people. 
And uh, that's how I came up. I came up in that era, like the late 70s, early 80s. And then as I started getting into the, the business, you know, I, you know, there's a few people who you cool with in the industry. Norm lived down the street. We both used to go see Ken Collier. And when I uh, started doing the underground resistance thing, he was, you know, I, I stopped DJing, but he was my guy who I turned to. Every time we made tracks, we gave it to him, and he pushed it. So we've always had, like, a business slash friendship relationship. Okay. The whole time, because so. the strictly beatdown party that you guys had was off the hinges. I mean, it was lo literally off the meter, both music-wise and and attendance-wise. It was it was something spectacular. And and Norman Delano, if you guys would be so kind enough as to get with Mike Clark again and do another strictly beatdown, <laughs> that would be also oh, proper and i would really appreciate it thank you in advance so for like the up-and-coming djs what would you what would you say to them well you know things are different and i'm not trying to sound old school because i'm far from wanting to sound like that but you know back then records weren't so many it was very few so you actually had a chance to learn your records but nowadays it's too much in abundance. But, you know, the biggest thing I could just tell anyone, just once you get your craft going, you hone in on your craft and you work on your own personality, but make sure it makes sense to your public because at the end of the day, you are making yourself into a product that you are selling to the pro to the public. Other than that, just you know, keep it in the basement. Other than that, if you are doing that, remember that. So, just that's the respect between DJs and uh, the crowd. Do you? And I haven't asked this question yet, but do you feel that there is a lack of respect? Well, the reason why I'm asking this question is um, Alan King had posted a. a, a a topic about you know the hate that goes on between the DJs and I had commented that I think that it's a you know some bruised egos and hurt feelings which is, makes DJs hate on other DJs so you what know, is your take on that it's just we all artists artists are sensitive people about the work and product so we're no different than anyone else you know you got people that have their own opinions of styles and ways and whatever but it's just your own shit so, you know, certain people don't jail together. They stay, get the fuck out, stay away from each other, you know. Right. And that's all it really is because, you know, I, I, I used to think, you know, for instance, in my head, you had to train for like three to five years before you actually went out and got a gig. That's where I come from. But that don't make sense nowadays. So not when you have things that make it easy, as I've yeah, heard you can just, you know, you people can push talk about. Button DJ overnight, and 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 rightly so. You know, I've, I've seen a guy get down playing YouTube videos on a laptop. You know, I can and say to me, <laughs> right? And, and to to me, I personally, and I'm not a DJ, and I and I get that, and I don't know what all of those knobs and. <clears throat> slider things do, excuse me. Yeah, they're just levels and EQs, that's all. Yeah, see, I don't know what any of that does, but to me, if you're a laptop YouTube DJ, I cannot respect you. I, I understand that you have a love for the music, but the respect level, no, it's not there. And for the average party goer, they really don't give two flying fucks. If there was a fuck to give, they wouldn't on how you play your music. But for the DJs themselves, it's been my understanding that there is a, a, a total lack of respect if you are a YouTube push button DJ. This is my theory, and and, <coughs> and it's only because of experience of, of, of trying to go what's quote unquote the norm. All I know is this if I got my back to you and you jamming, I don't give a fuck what you're using. As long as you jamming, I gotta respect you because you got me moving. So whether it's a YouTube or Nexus, if you got me moving with what you're doing. How do you lose respect to that? Okay. 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 Yeah. And and another thing that I love about Mike Clark, Mike Clark is this huge, massive guy. <laughs> and just your center is so grounded. But you study a lot of martial arts. How long have you been into martial arts? And do you have any black belts and or belts, period? Well, you know. I started before I actually got into music. I, I, I was I was into martial arts, believe it or not, when I was like six, seven years old. I went to school when I was in an, uh, eighth grade, so I don't know how old you are, like 11 or something like that, and just been at it ever since. I left uh, the Taekwondo school, I was like maybe, uh, I was a green, yeah, I was a green. 
Uh, then I just did street fighting shit, you know, just hooking up with different people off the street with different styles, going to tournaments and all that shit. And then in my 20s, I met my teacher, uh, C. Jow, he's Shamadi Baldwin now, and he does uh, Kung Fu. And uh, basically, I've been with him ever since. Um, I don't train as often as I used to, but I still do a lot of it. And I made it to, uh, with them, uh, like in the martial art world, like big brother level, you know, elder okay. brother, which is like, uh, it's give or take Sifu or not. Because okay. I know, you know, Sifu is a teacher. And I'm not necessarily a teacher. I can teach. Okay. I can instruct, but I chose a different path, which is my music. So the responsibility it takes to teach, I chose not to take on, but I still train. Okay. Like, uh, I train with uh, Jungle. He, he's a, he's a, a keto master. And that's DJ Jungle? DJ Jungle. He's wow, keto. I did oh, not know that. And the keto yeah. is with the blades and the swords. Yeah, the swords it? and the okay. flipping and twisting. I train with him on Tuesday. He does his self-defense classes uh, for the elderly, and I help assist. And I'm learning at the same time. You know, that's two different clever. styles. Yeah, it's, it's cool, you know, and I that's love it. That's really clever. Mm -hmm. And I guess the last thing I have to ask you is, what's your go-to track? What is your favorite track to play? If there is one, if you if you had to pick, I mean, I you know I listen to a bunch of stuff. Like for instance, right now, and you know this, like when we was in the van coming from Oasis, mm -hmm. Stellar Sonic, you know, yeah, I love I love that whole Stellar Sonic album. So big ups to them. Um, this is tune tune called Wayfaring Man. Uh, I forgot who made it, but it's like you know, just like some chill, uh, mellow, deep house type stuff. And what or who is your muse? My girl. <laughs> Rashawn. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I kinda knew that was, you know, I, yeah. yeah, that was. Well, like I got a good title friends, I'm gonna be honest. I got I gotta do shouts out to uh to uh some of my close friends and mentors. I gotta do a shout out to Roy Davis, Osalade, and Lil Lewis, Lewis Burns, because um you go through a certain stage in, in life when you rebrand and rebrand if you're part of this industry so you, you have these areas where you run into hits like okay well what am I doing now what's happening out here how do I you know hit the public what's what's my new plan of attack you know what's the latest you know where do I fit in at and you know I was coming across crossroads because no matter how you look at it you know you like 50 years old and you're trying to cater to a bunch of 20 and 30 year olds you have to figure out at what point are you not making sense because you're miles apart? Okay. You know, your frame of mind is over here. And, and theirs is here. over here. And right. even though you think you're there, you just think you're there. You know, just like us and our parents, you know. Right, you right. Couldn't, parents couldn't match our shit, <laughs> you know. But, you know, I think um, actually househeads make the coolest parents. And do you enjoy house or techno more? I like both because the whole thing when people separate the two, I never could because it was one for me, day, day one. When we made anything here, whether it was vocals, percussions or not, we called it techno. Okay. And in Chicago, because of Frankie Knuckles, everything they did, whether it was vocals or a riff track, whatever, it was called house. Okay. And up until this magazine, i never forget, and I remember the magazine, it was uh, Accelerator in San Francisco. They had a picture of Mark Kitchen and Lane on there. It was. Uh, it, it said the difference between house music and techno, and they was a hundred percent wrong. Wow. You know, yeah. And, and and the whole thing is the rest of the world followed it, and and, and this is my backing on it. The true only difference between house music and techno is house music is from Chicago and techno is from Detroit. Other than that, when you trace back to the original days, we was all making the same thing. You couldn't tell the difference between a Derek May track or. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, spank track or all those cats. You know? Okay. Because we was all either making some track shit or doing some vocal stuff. When I was doing Underground Resistance, we had Happy Records. So we doing tech. That's now. right. You that and Derek same... Jamerson. You yeah. all did, uh, 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 what is the name of the track? I love Gotta it. Gotta give it up. That one, and there's one that's really, 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 really hot that we did Tina it. uses on her show. I had to. I can't think. But we did a bunch of stuff, you know. Okay. Me, him, uh, you know. Mike had the gospel style of house. I had like the little funky, jazzy style, and you know, we just did a bunch. Yolanda Reynolds is one of our good artists, so it was a thing where we were all doing the same thing. But after that magazine, 
And this is my reason why I have that resentment about why people agree to that is because once that magazine went out and they separated us by city and state, you know, Detroit makes techno, Chicago makes house, correct me if I'm wrong, Detroit DJs were not working out here around the world. I was one of the very few, and that's because I had techno background. Okay. Know? So, I, you know, I would go overseas and do gigs, and they expect me to play some UR, and I'm not. But at the end of the day, they were confused because I'm coming from Detroit. Like, Detroit don't make soulful shit, like blues, funk, and house, and jazz didn't come from Detroit. You know, like, suddenly, the whole soulful thing that comes from Detroit was erased from memory. And it was always here. <laughs> it, was never it, was, left. It, it never left. It never left. It's just, not only did the public believe it, but Detroit themselves believe that shit. You know. I think we're definitely making a comeback, and I love what I the 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 term that I coined the I ninety four connection, and 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 we are just I think the Midwest in general is just yeah. the best place for house music, and and people yeah, like it was your, all one day one. I, I I remember going to Chicago way back before house music started. It was it was a DJ thing. You know, we 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 both shared the love for doing tricks and and scratching and all this stuff, even on disco, house, naughty above. So as we were generating our companionship, meaning Detroit and Chicago, um, the record started, the whole record thing started. And like with me, I was going back and forth. So it went from me going, hanging out and doing parties, you know, doing parties and hanging out at parties over there to me bringing the shipment of records and delivering them. Hey. Okay, how's it going? Hi, sweetie, Hi, how are you? So, you know, basically the biggest thing that I ended up learning was, uh, you know, how the, how, the it, how the business went from a small local situation to the beginning of a big situation. The beginning of the global movement. Yeah, you know, we went from DJing with each other to exchanging records to trying to get the rest of the world to buy it, to the rest of the world wanting to license it to it, to the rest of the world trying to take the fucking name. I, I was at all of that. The, the new music seminars, all the different fights. I was a part of all that. So. Wow, so you do go back a long way. So I'm, Well, I can tell you, I'll say it again. I'm part of the original establishment of this. Well, you know what? <laughs> There's a lot of originals in, yeah, in Detroit. I'm part of. I and ain't I'm, and the one. I would never say that. But you but are definitely a part I, of. I, it. I could tell you how to. So you grew up started. in that whole Seven Mile area. <laughs> seven Mile and Greenfield. So let me ask you this: Where did the, <laughs> where did this whole house scene start from? Because you know me, I said Seven Mile. West well, side. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a definitely, I'm gonna say that as well, but. I know William Tandy and a couple other cats, Delano and all them cats, they grew up, they went to Cooley. Right. But like, you know, Todd Johnson, you know, you had X amount of people that lived in Sherwood. All of us that went to Henry Ford, people went to Redford, people Mumford. went to Mumford. Uh, Benedictine, part, let's yeah. not forget Benedictine. I all need that. to, cause you all know, part of, all part of the Rick Wilhite. Patrice Scott. I'm talking like early Dave Spivey. I understand that, but I'm just saying I gotta like, shout my people out that went yeah. to Benedictine. Y'all are important, but let's just, you know. Yeah, I'm talking about like, you know. Rick Trump, all of y'all. Benedictine Trumps every high school because of Rick Will Height. Doggone it. Yep, I said it. Trump? I know it. If you say so, but I, I do. I'll say back in uh, Henry Ford in the 70s when Dwayne Bradley went there, Mike T couple other folks that was like the beginning of a lot of the eras and uh king Kai lived off of seven mile in greenfield seven miles that's what i'm saying seven so, miles know. where all this house music stuff started yeah from. so we were all in the same part of the neighborhood part of the same area and you know, like i said i grew up they they're, they're all of them you know Teresa hill ty johnson they all like my older brothers because you know older brothers it's and all in that same we're I used to talk about them before Sharivari because a lot of people would talk about Derek Wine and Kevin and that's talking about the techno history and Detroit as I will always say started before techno and it's never taken nothing away from it because techno helped bring us you know it, it brought a lot to the table for us but for you to ignore where techno started from it's even worse. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the whole thing that ends up happening is you you end up missing the true history. You end up erasing what happened after Motown. You know, what happened after Funk, the bands. Wow. You know, 
you you erase everything and go straight to it. And then these guys came from Belleville and saved Detroit. No. These guys from Belleville came to Detroit, started playing, and got famous. We was already doing it. It's just that that history doesn't get talked about. Well, I'm definitely glad that you told us that history. We might have I, to I do talk about it in every magazine, you know, uh, in the end of the shit I did with Red Bull. It's just I talk about a form of history that isn't as interesting as the norm. Well, it was interesting to me, and I'm quite sure it'll be interesting to anybody and everybody who listens to this. Um, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I, me and my battery life have been going kind of low. So yeah. what we'll do is Mike and I are going to end this interview right yes. here. This is definitely one of my really good friends, and I'm so glad that we reconnected outside of the beauty parlor. Thank you so much for pop, being on Popping Up on the Player, Mike, and thank you all for listening and tuning in. Tonight, me, Mike, Motor City Wine, Seth Carter, Peace. and Gabe Gonzalez. Yes. All righty. Catch us in traffic. Peace. Peace.